Hello, everybody. This is Leo Brady with TheMovieGuy.com. I am here with the fantastic award-winning director, Lucas Dant, of his new film. We're talking about his new film, Close. Lucas, thanks so much for being with me here today. My pleasure. Yeah, congrats about this film. Um, I was absolutely uh, touched. This movie is emotional and powerful. Um, but I like to start off my interviews by asking... Uh, Go into sort of a little bit, I, I like to ask about your own sort of study and history of film, like what types of movies have sort of inspired you and led you to sort of the kind of movies that you have been making? Well, that's, that, that's immediately quite a, a profound <laughs> um, question. Yeah. So I, I think I, I have to say that the I think I remember I had this vivid memory from from childhood um, when um, I stayed at home. I, st I stayed with the babysitter and my mom, she went to the cinema. Yeah. And so I stayed up for when she would get home because, I mean, I obviously didn't listen to anything uh she asked me to and so when she came back home uh, I was waiting um, I was waiting for her and I remember seeing her face and seeing that the film had impacted her deeply and um, from that moment on I just asked her to tell me a scene of that film uh, every time before bed yeah the film we are speaking of is Titanic. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so for the longest time, uh, my bedtime stories were scenes of that movie. Yeah. Um, and I think I just, rem I think I just realized or there was this spark I felt of wanting to be able to do that, to do that to someone, you know, do what I feel like Titanic did to my mother at that moment in time. Yeah. And um, and so my father, he drove us to a, a videotheque and we got to rent movies. And a lot of those movies were uh, horror films or uh, spectacles or really alien, you know, films with yeah. other types of realities. And I think that in the beginning, when I was young, that is what cinema was for me. It was this way of escaping reality. It was this way of disappearing into um, another world because as a young boy I very much in my reality sensed um, the confrontation between the body I was born in and the expectations that were put upon it yeah. by this society I very much felt the the roles and the the performance of gender at that age and it felt very uncomfortable to me so i felt very comforted by this cinema in which i didn't have to confront any of that yeah so in the beginning when i was writing i was 15 and i wrote a script for a horror film and with zombies and i i had my nephews and nieces be actors and and and, and for when i entered film school at 18 that was what i thought i wanted to do i i thought i wanted to write uh, about other realities and then i think in film school i i was confronted with a film that actually changed a little bit who i am today and also changed the cinema that i make which was of a fellow belgian filmmaker chantal ackerman yeah i saw jean dilman in mm -hmm. film school for the first time and i was shocked i was I was moved. I hadn't seen anything like it in cinema. Yeah. I had seen this image in my reality. I had seen my mother in the kitchen. I had seen my grandmother do the, do the laundry. I had seen these women in my life. And yet I had never looked at them in that way that Chantal made us look at this woman. Yeah. Someone who was assigned a role, was given a space. I guess she uncovered for me these invisible walls. Uh, of society yeah 
And what I realized by seeing that film is that I could also place the camera right next to me. And that maybe that reality that I had been running away from, that there was this possibility to confront it with a camera. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's even, that's amazing to hear sort of that story because, and I, I am guessing you've told this story a lot, but for our audience, I, I want to get in and how you casted your lead actor, Eden Dembreen, in this film. Uh, I mean, like, I've never heard of a story like this. Uh, and I think that sort of speaks to, like you're saying about watching Chantal Ackerman's films, about sort of how you kind of want to view the authenticity. Can you sort of tell our audience a little bit about how you casted him in the film, but also really what sort of uh, what sort of came into your mind to say I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to I'm going to cast him in this this impulse, right? Well, I so when I think that when the script was done, we realized that we would need to find two 13 year old boys at that very fragile, precise moment in time between childhood and puberty. Yeah, a moment that so often doesn't last very long. Right, and. Uh, so I went scouting in all the schools in and around Brussels, and I met a lot of very young, talented people. But then, and I guess we could call that or luck or destiny, depending on who you are. <laughs> there was I was taking a train in Belgium and listening to music, listening to Max Richter, which makes everything a little bit of cinema. Yeah. And as I look next to me, there is this young angel talking to his friends, being very expressive. And I felt like it was this world already hiding behind his eyes. Yeah. And I, 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 I understood that if I didn't act upon this moment handed to me by life, that I would probably regret it afterwards. Yeah. So I went up to him and I asked him if he wanted to do a casting for cinema, which he did. And so we, we invited him. He did uh, additions like many of these other boys. Yeah. We saw them in groups and he just, he surprised us. He, and especially because he came in a group together with Gustav, who plays the other lead of the film. And there yeah. was this instant chemistry between them that just was special. There was this physicality between them, this intimacy. And we felt like a collaboration and a friendship between them would be very possible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that and that shows immediately on the screen. And um, what I really like gravitated to in this movie, and I wonder if it, uh, if you can talk a little bit about the writing process and just coming up with the idea of the story of the film. Um, what I pulled out of it was that it was not simple; it was complex. Like I felt all the complexity of what it meant to be a human, what it meant to be a young 13 year old boy. You know, I don't think you turn the camera and say this person's right or this person's wrong. You leave it up open for the audience to sort of make their own view on it, but also understand that there's a complexity to it. How, how did you even sort of put that down on paper and sort of come up with something that really feels so authentic. Well, thank you. That's a very <laughs> big compliment. Um, well, I guess, you know, it's, it's, I guess too often the world gets divided into good and bad and, and it's very confusing because when we are young, we feel responsibility and guilt for the first time, all of us. And as we have, been taught that the world is good or bad we often categorize ourselves as bad yeah and we carry that with us and we feel shame for it and for some of us it becomes this weight that we can never let go of um this film is definitely about that fragile age when caution is thrown thrown with the wind and when sometimes the, the, the desire to belong to many rather than to one is so big that we betray parts of ourselves. Yeah. 
I think we have all been in the complex relationship that is friendship and we have all felt heartbreak linked to it and and so often it is only expressed in romantic relationships not in friendships and so I feel like there's many layers many teams in there that connect very universally that are shared experiences of us human beings yeah um and you know in this film we try to find um a sort of experience for that we try to to find visuals we try to build a sort of cinematic journey that would take you on and would confront us with those small little wounds that maybe we have carried with us from childhood um yeah 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 well i mean and and honestly too uh, talk a little bit about um working with kids working with kids of this age i mean it's it's uh, did you find that obviously coming off of the success of girl and, and I know that that's a different age range that you're working with there, but did you find this to be easier, more difficult or, or cause I found the, the scenes that you capture of them just in the playground or, you know, <laughs> running free, the separation of like the pressure of family versus school, how, how were you able to sort of create such an authentic look? And did it become equally difficult working with groups of 20 kids running around in circles and things of that nature? Well, I think that with this age category, I think we as a, as a society can learn so much from listening to kids. Yeah. Because I think that they say things in such a pure, radical, essential way. Like they do not speak censored by a society that accepts and expects certain things they really speak from the heart yeah. and so i love to listen to 13 year olds speak yeah and when they read the script for the first time and reflected on it i was amazed and i think in many ways it shaped the final form of this piece i mean the structure stayed the same the dramaturgy but yeah. i do feel like they be really became co-authors and I think it's about finding the right people to work with. And of course, we, I mean, that work before you arrive on set is really important. We, we rehearsed for over six months. Wow. Um, and what we build in that moment is we build confidence and we build intimacy. And I really invite them to, to become the shapers of their own roles. And so I think if that work is put in and if they feel all those things, if they feel family and if they feel comfort, I do feel like you can achieve great things with them. Yeah. Uh, because of this raw honesty that they have. And especially when you put, you know, these actors like Léa Drucker and Emily De Ken and also the, other, the others with them who fall back on technique and on years of experience, right. there's, some, there's really some magic when ha that happens when you confront these two yeah yeah well and it's interesting too because um i felt like they you talk about the sort of separation between the parents and the kids i felt like this isn't a movie about like uh parents neglecting kids or a movie about um the parents not being there but you do a great job of sort of creating a divide and how i think like 13 year olds no matter how much a parent keeps track of them there's so many difficult things that they won't be able to <laughs> help them with yes and i think that that growth you created that with this authenticity and and like you said uh getting the kids in the right space um i i, I wanted to ask um one last question i mean I, honestly now it's finally getting out into theaters which is fantastic and i think that's definitely the way that this movie is supposed to be seen um but this is only your second feature film and you uh have already won you won the grand prix for this film at the Cannes film festival can have you been able to put into context sort of uh, have you come down off of the high of, of receiving that award and i know that you ta you basically shared the award with claire denis uh try to put into context just what it has meant to you for this movie to sort of receive that sort of accolade and attention? Well, I mean, 
the second piece is always it's, 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 it seems to always be like a very challenging one yeah because you've you've made one and you've you've been confronted with also expectations and and reactions and I felt I, there was an insecurity for me to making a second one that that um, made it a very a very vulnerable process yeah. and I've embraced that vulnerability but when I heard you know I was in post uh, in Amsterdam in an Airbnb when I got the call that the film was selected to be a part of the competition in Cannes and so I, I I've closed the the curtains and jumped up and down for 25 minutes <laughs> it's just because I feel like it's so like you know what a privilege that it's a privilege having your work seen on such a scale that not every filmmaker that makes an incredible piece of cinema gets yeah and so I felt incredibly lucky but also incredibly relieved to be given that gift then of course Claire Denis is uh, <laughs> is you know someone who has created so many pieces of cinema that have influenced this world and have influenced cinema yeah um, and so to be up there with her feels like kind of like a sort of weird dream you know where like and i think i've dreamt about it actually afterwards <laughs> just talking with her non-stop behind it's just it's it's overwhelming it's overwhelming in the sense that when you put your heart and in, in, into something and you receive that love back it's it's always like it, there's an incredible thankfulness that we have yeah yeah all right well lucas don thank you so much for talking with me today congratulations close is going to be in theaters february 3rd uh we appreciate it and congratulations thank you so much thank you